Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great weekend and today I just wanted to chill out. I needed something chill and I thought it would be fun to take some BuzzFeed makeup quizzes. <laughs> Do you guys remember when Facebook used to have all those quizzes on the side? I think it's Facebook or wasn't my MySpace. I just remember taking like the most random quizzes like to find out what cereal you are or whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> some of them are so ridiculous and so I thought I would look up some BuzzFeed ones and there were some pretty interesting quizzes to take so I'm gonna do I think three we'll see how long they are I don't know <laughs> I will leave the links down below if you want to check them out uh, and see what you are these are the titles that we're gonna be doing today the first one we're gonna take because I think it'll be interesting are you actually bad at makeup Mm, we'll find that out. I thought this one would be funny. If you pass this quiz, you are absolutely a makeup guru. We'll really find out if I'm a, a beauty guru, you guys. <laughs> There's also ones like about your personality, but the one that I thought was interesting, and we'll see if they can guess. It says, create your ideal makeup look and we'll accurately guess your zodiac sign. We'll see if it's true. So yeah, let's get into it. We're gonna start off and figure out if I'm bad at makeup or not. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm already nervous. Are you actually bad at makeup? Let's see how strong your eyebrow game really is. So the first question is, what's the best lighting to apply your makeup? And it has this picture of like a vanity, which I'm like, is that misleading or not? I don't know. The answers are natural lighting, studio lighting, fluorescent lighting, yellow lighting. We know it's not fluorescent, I don't think anything good comes from fluorescent lighting. Not yellow lighting, studio lighting. It, this is the thing, the best lighting to do your makeup. I think it's natural makeup or natural lighting first for like most people because if you're gonna be like going out and whatever, but if you're doing makeup on someone, the best lighting is whatever the heck the lighting's gonna be for them. I think that a really good example of this, wow, I'm already going off on a tangent. I think a really good example of makeup that's not in the right lighting maybe when you do it is, okay, I hate to call this out, but like, have you ever seen in 13 Reasons Why? Especially when he has that like cut on his head and it's like yellow and it's so freaky weird. I think that, well, one that could be color grading like post production, but also I think if you're doing makeup in a certain lighting in like a trailer or before you get on set and then you get on set and the lighting's different, that can throw everything off. So, okay, anyway, back to this. I'm gonna go with natural lighting as my answer. <laughs> I'm correct. Natural daylight shows what your makeup really looks like, and it's true, and this is the reason why you do your makeup in your bathroom, you get in your car, you're like, oh, maybe you're checking if you have boogers or something in your teeth, and then you pull down that mirror and you're like, oh my gosh, this is what I look like. My foundation looks a different color. You can see every baby fuzzy hair, like in between your eyebrows like everything's going on yeah that's because of the different lighting moving on <laughs> I'll try not to take 700 years answering each question what should you apply first okay you guys blush foundation primer face powder we all know you guys primer yeah correct your makeup needs a good base primer is that good base uh, I think this is questionable I think you can use moisturizer it depends on your skin type it depends on the products you're using some people don't and it works out totally fine for them some people just use a really nice moisturizer and that's enough for them I do personally like a primer I feel like it really helps me out and I love the way my skin feels before applying like base products um, like actual color cosmetics based products so I like a primer but but I don't think you have to have it. You just have to have a good starting base, whatever that means for you. We're two for two, you guys. At most, how many shades lighter than your skin tone should your concealer be? I think everyone always says three shades lighter, like it shouldn't be more than three shades lighter. That's just what I always hear. But I feel like that's kind of gone out of trend a little bit. I think for me at least, I enjoy having a concealer that's maybe only one, sh like slightly brighter, but really I'm not looking for a stark under eye highlight. I just want my skin to look nice. I don't want my eyes to look like sunken in if I can help it. I got those like chubby little squirrel cheeks. And sometimes with my concealer, like I just don't want to like showcase that as much. So I feel like sometimes with the like brighter one, it really, it looks bad. So I'm gonna go with three because I feel like that's the answer they want. <gasps> Two, I'm wrong. Do you guys remember? Everyone would say three, like no more than three shades, but um, I guess it's two, I'm wrong. It says going no more than two shades lighter will help you avoid a super bright contrasting under eye area. Well, I think that's better advice than what I was guessing. I was just guessing what I thought that they'd want, but I do think that the two shades lighter, like no more than two shades is 
the best advice. So I'm happy about that at least. Next question, how often should you wash your makeup brushes? Oh my, I definitely think minimum should be once a week. I'm not gonna tell you how often I wash my own personal brushes. If you're working on other people, it should be more than that, but I'm gonna go with once a week and I'm correct. <laughs> Dermatologists recommend that you clean those beauty tools once a week, do it for your skin. I think this is really great advice. I don't know if it's like practical everyone's life and if it is your life, I, I feel like you got your shit more together. <laughs> <laughs> I think once a week is pretty nice. And also you can have a lot smaller of a collection of brushes because they're clean and ready to use, you know? Okay, next. What's usually the best foundation tool to give you a smooth, even finish? A brush, a sponge, your hands. A smooth, even finish. I mean, I think depending on your skin type and like your skin, because I'm telling you, everyone's skin reacts to products so differently. I personally like a sponge. I like that you aren't pulling up like potentially dead skin or dry patches. Um, I just think sometimes buffing can be, it's like a mini exfoliator, right? And so sometimes that can bring up your skin. So I'm gonna go with a sponge, but I could see them saying a brush. Oh mm. yeah, they don't think so. Using a good foundation brush typically gives you smooth, even coverage. It can, but I also have noticed for me at least, depending on the points of my face, like it doesn't necessarily, I just don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think it's true. I just think a sponge, you can, you know, take your time, really apply it and you're applying it right on top. I don't know guys, I don't know. Brushes can sometimes leave brush strokes as well. So I'm not sure I agree, even though they say I'm wrong. All right, next, where should you apply foundation to see if it's the right shade? The back of your hand, no, we already know that's a no. Your forearm, your jawline, or your nose, and it's definitely your jawline. It says, correct, testing the foundation on your jawline helps to see if the shade will match the edges of your face. I think the jawline is a really nice area because you can also see like how the sun hits you and where you've been tanned or whatnot. It's all so different. And so I do think the jawline's a really good rule of thumb, so you can get a little bit on the face and you can also get a little bit it's close to the neck as well so you can see I also can see testing a little bit to the neck like depending on how much neck is going to be showing and if there's sun damage there and kind of figuring out where you want to match or kind of what middle ground you want to find between all of the different tones that people can have on their face neck and chest I think that can be good but definitely not the back of your hand your hand is totally like it's uh, exposed to way different light. It's just not a really good representation of your actual like face skin <laughs> uh, color. So yeah, that I think is really good advice. What makeup trick makes your eyes appear larger? Wearing mascara on your lower lashes, applying dark eyeshadow to your outer lids, curling your lashes, using black eyeliner on your waterline. Okay, so definitely not using the black <laughs> eyeliner on your waterline. That's why I tend to not do that because I do have a little bit more like almondy eyes. They're just a little bit smaller in some ways. So I do not like to do that because it definitely closes them off. So that's a no. Wearing mascara on your lower lash line. I don't know. I mean, I could see that maybe being the case because you're kind of like opening, but I also feel like anything really on the bottom I don't know if I count that. Applying dark eyeshadow to your outer lids, is that gonna make them appear larger or just more, I don't know. Curling your lashes can help too though. I don't know, I'm gonna go with the eyeshadow one. I don't know, I think that this is like, Oh, mm. wrong, curling your lashes. <laughs> okay, I suck at makeup, guys. Why do you watch my channel? <laughs> this is wrong, curling those lashes makes your eyes look wide and awake. I can see that. I just think like, mm. I think it was like a tricky question, okay. <laughs> Where would you normally not apply highlighter? Along your cheekbones, down the bridge of your nose, above your lips, along your temples. Along your temples, you normally wouldn't uh, apply highlighter. It makes your face look wider because it's like usually here. I don't know, you guys know I kind of do what I want, but I think that one makes sense. I don't know. I think we all would have got that one right. Okay, next, true or false? You should use translucent powder to remove excess blush. Mm. I think you can. You can use like any type of finishing powder to kind of like blend in and kind of diffuse maybe a little too much color. So I'm gonna say true. Mm. False. What? Okay, this is what it says. Translucent powder can alter the color of your blush, which I'm like, but it's translucent. 
And I, maybe that's just a point of like, yeah, we all know that I guess translucent powder isn't actually translucent. But anyway, try blotting paper instead. I don't know if I agree with this. If you put too much blush on to try to diffuse it, you can use a little bit of powder. I would, if I was working on someone, I would do that. I would use maybe not even translucent. Maybe I'd use like more of like a powder with a little bit of their skin tone in it. And I would really buff it and especially around the edges and just kind of loosen that color up a little bit. Um, I don't think I would blot. I don't know. I feel like you run the risk of potentially if you're really trying to like get stuff off, like making something patchy. I don't know if I agree. All right, continuing on, where should you not store your beauty products? A closet, a fridge, a bathroom counter, a drawer. I think that they're gonna say bathroom counter, honestly, because it's like, it can be humid from the shower. Obviously people are like peeing and pooping and like that can be a thing. <laughs> um, I mean, sometimes we put like skincare in fridges. So that's why I think that's okay. A closet can be like dark and I don't know, like I don't see anything wrong with a closet. It might not be the most useful. And then a drawer. So we're gonna go with bathroom counter. Yeah. A cool dry place works best. Your bathroom can get pretty humid and excess moisture means you risk spreading bacteria. Rose. All right, I sucked you guys. Are you actually bad at makeup? The final uh, result is you got mm. six out of ten, right? You're decent at makeup. <laughs> I'm just decent at makeup, not too shabby. Okay, all right. You could probably work a little magic with some eyeliner, but there's still room to improve. Wow, I feel, um, I feel a little upset. They really tried it with me, didn't they? Let's move on to the next quiz, okay? We found out that I'm, I'm decently bad at makeup. I suck at makeup, actually. <laughs> If you pass this quiz, you're absolutely a beauty, a makeup guru. Okay, this will be the test. I have a feeling I'm not gonna do well. It says this makeup quiz is the only way to know if you're cut out for beauty or not. <laughs> They are really authoritative. We'll start with the basics. Then I'm bringing out the makeup big dogs or makeup sponges, IDK. <laughs> After cleansing and toning, what is the first step in your makeup routine? Foundation, blush, highlight, moisturizer. We haven't moisturized yet in this scenario, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And I'm right, it turned green, so I think that's right, but they do not give you an explanation like the last one. Oh, okay, we got a picture here, a little diagram. It says, what is this called? I think it's interesting because they have highlighting as an option, which there are highlighting elements going on in this picture. There's shaping here, which this is shaping the face. Then there's painting, which depending on the terms you use, people call you putting makeup on painting your face, but I don't think it's that one. And then the last one here is contouring, but there's also contouring going on. I feel like this is a trick question. I'm gonna go with contouring. I feel like that's gonna be what the answer is, but there is absolutely highlighting going on. I think I got it right though with contouring. I don't think that question was a good one though. Which of these is true about CC creams? A CC cream is much heavier than a BB cream. A CC cream also color corrects your skin. A CC cream is meant to be worn on top of your foundation. A CC cream is pure foundation. I'm gonna go with CC stands for color correcting and boom baby, I'm right. Okay, next. What does it mean if a product is hypoallergenic? It means that it's made from hippos. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. It means that it's an all natural product. It means that it's not safe to use. It means that it's not likely to cause an allergic reaction. Hypo, allergenic. Let's go with the allergic reaction. We all knew it and I'm right. Okay, next, this one's moving a lot faster because they don't sit there and try to give you little tips and stuff. How often should you replace your mascara? Every three months, you guys, every three months, it's super important. Next, what is this contraption? <laughs> what is this medieval torture device? It is a eyelash curler, we all know. How many of you guys use an eyelash curler? I do not, I do not use an eyelash curler. I'd love to know if you guys do though. Next, what lipstick shades look best to hide discolored teeth? Ooh, blue-based red and pink shades, coral reds and bright oranges, neutral and brown shades, deep wines and burgundy tones. I wanna say the best to hide discolored teeth. I wanna say blue-based reds. I know it's not coral reds and bright oranges. I don't think it's like those burgundy purpley tones because that like is contrasting with the yellow. I, I It's between neutral and brown shades, but I wanna say blue-based. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. No, I don't know. I'm gonna go neutral. I don't know. I mean, I think I know in theory, but I don't know why this is confusing me. I don't wanna get one wrong. I wanna get 100% so bad. Oh my God, this is like my, my little studious self coming out. Mm -hmm. 
But if brown is like more yellow tone, I don't know. I always, but I know that like cool toned like pinks can be like scary looking too. And that's what they say, blue based pink shades. Like some of those can look bad, but I thought like a blue, blue toned red would look nice. <sighs> you guys, should I go with my gut? Or should I go with the other one and then be like, I knew it. <laughs> this should not take this long. I'm right. Oh, I'm so glad I picked it. Okay, I went with my gut and it totally panned out. Okay, good. Blue based reds and pink shades. The pink is what threw me off. But yeah, blue based reds look the best if you're looking to not have something that's super, like not make your teeth look more yellow. Okay, good. <laughs> I can prove I went to school at least. Jeez. Okay, how often should you wash your makeup brushes? We already talked about this every single week, y'all. Okay, how often should you replace your lipstick? I think that's every two years. Yeah, every two years. All right, final round. Who is this Fami? <laughs> Fami. Who is this famous beauty YouTuber? We all know that's Jaclyn Hill, girl. Come on. Oh, we have more. Who is this famous beauty entrepreneur? That's Huda. Nice. Ah, oh, who is this famous beauty influencer? That's Jackie Ina. Who is this famous beauty influencer? Jeff or <laughs> Jeffrey Star? What? No, James Charles. Sue John. <laughs> That's a funny option. Lastly, who is this beauty entrepreneur also known as the first self-made beauty billionaire? And that is mother Pat McGrath. Oh my gosh. They make you type it in. They're not going to help you out. Okay, let me spell it right. Pat McGrath. Woo woo. All right, you guys, this makeup quiz is the only way to know if you're cut out for beauty or not. And I got 14 out of 14 right. What an improvement. <laughs> it's good to know. It's really good to know. Wow, bow down to the beauty guru. You know your ish, my friend. You know how long makeup products can last before being tossed and who's who of the industry heavyweights and all the lingo happening in the beauty industry. Go on and educate your friends and family. Remember, a family that makeup slays together, makeup no, just stays together. A family that makeup slays together stays together. All right, guys, 100%. I should definitely share that with everyone. <laughs> okay, pretty happy about that, you guys. And then the last one, this is the one I really, I'm like, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> it says, create your ideal makeup look and we'll accurately guess your zodiac sign. Can it be? Okay, create your ideal, we've got this. Once again, super authoritative. Pick some primer. Oh my gosh, okay. Also, spoiler, this is like um, when they do the slime on the Nickelodeon show and they're like, the secret. So we'll see, we'll all see together. I don't know why this makes me so excited, but it's fun. Pick some primer. The Too Faced Tutti Fruity Do You Fresh Glow Luminous Face Primer, Benefit Professional, no. NYX Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer, Tempted, Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer in a past life, in a past life. It's between the Too Faced and the NYX. I think that I would go right now, honestly, with the Too Faced one. So I'm gonna pick that one. Pick some foundation. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Cover Foundation. Y'all know I'm gonna pick it. And we have the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer, Estee Lauder Double Wear, and the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I've only tried the Makeup Forever Ultra HD and it's also what I used to use in my kit and I truly love it. Pick some concealer. Tarte Double Duty Beauty Shape Tape Con Contour Concealer. We have the Boing Industrial Strength Concealer. Nudes Nudies Tinted Blur Stick. I don't even think that's a concealer. And then the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle Treatment Concealer. Definitely the Maybelline one. That one's really, really good. I actually missed it in my collection, picking that. Pick some powder. I don't want any, I don't want it. But if I have to pick, we have the Beauty Bakery Face Flower Baking Powder, the Too Faced Tutti Fruity Do You Fresh Glow Translucent Setting Powder, Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder, not the one I'm gonna go with, and the Clinique Blended Face Powder and Brush. Mm. I like the Too Faced one only because it has translucent in the name. And if I'm gonna go with a powder that's loose, I want it to be translucent. But like, if I had to try one of these, I would probably go with the Beauty Bakery. But for, I feel like we have to go based off of like terms and little words and all this so that they can like really get what my sign is. I think that the Too Faced one is a better idea of what my sign would be. That's what I'm gonna go with. Pick some bronzer. We have the Too Faced 
Chocolate Soleil Matte Bronzer, the Morphe Glamma Bronze Face and Body Bronzer, the NARS Bronzing Powder, and the Becca Sunlit Bronzer. I'm gonna go with the Becca, but the NARS was a close second. Pick some blush. Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush, Milani Baked Blush, the Ofra Island Time Blush, I really like that one, and then the Benefit Benetint Cheek and Lip Stain. I wish they had a cream option in here. I'm gonna go with the Milani Baked Blush just because again, I do like that luminous look. I just feel like overall again with my style I think that one that one represents my style the most okay next pick some highlighters oh my it's like it's like making me skew a lot to like Too Faced and I don't know if that's real but anyway we have the Too Faced Too Deep Fruity Pineapple Paradise strobing bronzer and highlighter duo I do really like that that's like definitely high on my list Smashbox crystallized highlighter super pretty but I don't think that's a highlighter I'm gonna choose Smith & Colt Glitter Shot All Over Glitter Crush. I've heard from you guys that these suck <laughs> and that they just have like a top spray. Definitely not picking it, plus it's glitter. And then the last thing, Too Faced Diamond Light Multi-Use Diamond Fire Highlight. I actually have that highlighter. It's super beautiful. <gasps> I'm gonna go with the Too Faced Split Pan one. I feel like that's, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. Okay, pick some eyeshadow. None, okay. Oh gosh, okay. Tarte Adeline Morin Eye and Cheek Palette. We have the Tarte Make Magic Happen Eyeshadow Palette. Who picked these options? Very weird. Uh, Juvia's Place Warrior Two. I like that palette a lot. It's a really great quality palette, but it's all matte. And I feel like as much as I like that palette and I think it's good quality and you know, all that, it's not representative of my style. I'm definitely like a shimmer girl. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go with the NARS one because because it looks very like shiny and more like shimmery and way more me, even if the colors aren't what I would necessarily choose. So I'm gonna go with the Endless Orgasm palette. Also that name, Endless. <laughs> okay, pick some eyeliner. We have the Too Faced Better Than Sex Easy Glide Waterproof Eyeliner. We have the Tarte Sugar Rush Preppy Precision Eyeliner. The Urban Decay Pink Glide On Eye Pencil and the MAC one. I'm gonna go with the Urban Decay because they have so many colors and I definitely use a pencil liner more than any of the other like liners that I have. And I love doing like a color Colorful liner in the waterline, all that. So I'm gonna go with Urban Decay. Pick some mascara. Benefit, they're real. We have the Too Faced Better Than Sex, the Pure Big Look, and the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. I'm gonna go with the only two I've tried from here are the Benefit and the Tarte. And I definitely did, I remember enjoying the Tarte one, so I'm gonna go with that one. And finally, 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 pick some lipstick. None. Okay, MAC Powder Kiss Lipstick. Tarte Tartus Creamy Matte Lip Paint. Both of those are a no. The NARS lipstick, which is just like NARS lipstick. <laughs> like, what is it? Is it like a creamy one? Is it matte? Is it long wearing? Is it like sheer? What's going on? And then the Lime Crime Matte Velveteen Lipstick. I'm gonna go with the NARS one. I used to have a NARS in like Dolce Vita or something, and that was really nice and kind of sheer, so I'm gonna pretend it's that. I know a lot of people like the Audacious lipsticks as well, so let's see. Oh, okay, it's wrong. It's wrong. It thinks I'm a Gemini, you guys. You got Gemini. The Gemini lifestyle means busy, busy, busy. This particular air sign is interested in so many pursuits that one feels as though they need to clone themselves. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I agree with that in a lot of ways, but I am not. I'm an Aquarius, and I really wonder why they didn't know that. How could they not know that? I thought they knew. <laughs> Thought they knew everything, you guys. I would love specifically to know if you take this quiz, what you get and if it's accurate. I don't even know how they picked that. Maybe the split pan made me, is Gemini the split one? I don't know, I don't even know. Last, let's do one more because this has been kind of fun for me. Okay, how do your beauty opinions compare to everyone else's? Oh my gosh, I just went through like seven pages to get here. How do your beauty opinions compare to everyone else's? This was created in 2020, May 2020. So which makeup look do you prefer out of these three? Natural makeup look, a glam makeup look, and a graphic makeup look. Tough, I like them all. I also feel like the glam makeup look is not what I would call glam. Uh, ooh. I don't know. I love color, but I wouldn't say I like graphic stuff as much. I love it on other people. I'm talking about myself. I'm gonna go graphic though. I think that's, oh, only 4% of people chose that. So, okay. I forgot kind of what we're doing here, but it's like seeing how I compare to most of the population that picks stuff. What kind of foundation do you prefer? Powder, liquid, no foundation. I like a liquid, which most people like liquid foundations. That is the most popular one, 69%. 69%. Which lipstick shade do you prefer? I think I'm gonna go with that Lime Crime one that's kind of mauve -y. That's definitely the highest one. Most people click that one at 
6%. Which eye look do you prefer? A bold eye, a smoky eye, or a natural eye? I like a bold eye. Most people went with natural though. I think that makes sense with how many neutral palettes and how successful they are and all that. So yeah, it makes sense. How do you maintain your brows? Waxing, threading, tweezing, none of it, none of it. But I guess when I do do anything, it's tweezing. 56% are tweezers. <laughs> This is a weird one. I don't really like this one as much, but would you rather smash your favorite liquid foundation, ruin your favorite lipstick? Definitely ruin my favorite lipstick because usually those are cheaper than a foundation. Everyone agrees. No, 71% of people agree. All right, what's your skincare routine like? I only wash my face with soap and water. I use cleanser, but also use face masks a few times a week. I cleanse daily and follow it up with a rigorous skincare routine. I have an extensive skincare routine in the morning and at night. I think I'm more the, I cleanse daily and followed up with a rigorous, I mean, rigorous, what does that mean? But I do like a serum, an eye cream, a moisturizer. So I would say I'm more rigorous. Oh wow, 25% of people. Most people, oh, most people do the cleanser with a few face masks. A lot of people only do a uh, face wash. Wow, I don't know how their skin isn't like tight. It's like, I don't, I need that moisturizer after. Okay, next, would you rather get mascara on your eyelid after doing your makeup or smudge your lipstick after doing your makeup? Oh, they're both horrible. Uh, especially when the lipstick stains, it's the worst. You just like, it's just messy. But you can always use concealer. I think it's easier to clean that up even though they're both irritating uh, than it is to take off, especially how much it's showing in this picture. I think that I would go with get mascara on my eyelid. Oh no, <laughs> wait, what? No, I think that would be worse. So I would go with the smudge your lipstick, which, ooh, this one's a tight one. 51% and 49%, but the majority picked with me. Next, how often do you clean your makeup brushes? Oh no, this one's gonna call me out. Like literally, I don't wanna tell you. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't wash them once a month, but I don't wash them once a year either. I'm more in between. I'm in between that <laughs> at least. But if I'm being, I know it's not once a month. It's definitely not. I just have so many brushes. I don't even need to do that, but also I'm disgusting. <laughs> at least I'm not the only one. Oh my gosh, the number one is never clean them. Thank the Lord, people are answering this real, okay? That is some real shit right there. Would you rather shop at Sephora or Ulta? You guys know, it's definitely Sephora for me. I had a whole video about like comparing Sephora and Ulta. I think that they're both awesome. Which one gets me the most excited? Definitely Sephora. And wow, 72% as opposed to 28% Ulta. I think that's it, I don't know. It just says, what do you think? I thought the last one would be more fun than that but it is what it is i hope you guys enjoy just sitting having a little fun i definitely want to know if you take any of these quizzes what your scores were how'd you do i mean i guess you know the answers because we did this but if you do any other ones i guess i would love to know i hope you enjoyed just chilling out my next video is going to be my long long overdue what i spent and what was sent video so be on the lookout for that and other than that i'm really gonna go i hope you guys are doing well and thanks so much for watching